Teacher Jen. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Teacher Jen, and welcome to my classroom. Today, we are going on a holiday to Mindanao. Mindanao has six regions. Zamboanga Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, Davao, Soxargen, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, and Caraga. We don't have enough time to travel to all the regions, so let's go to four out of six regions. We will start the trip in Soxargen to Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, then to Northern Mindanao, and finally, Zamboanga Peninsula. Then take a boat to Dumaguete, then back to Cebu. Are you ready? Let's go! We fly from Cebu City to General Santos City. Jensen is part of Sarangani Province, which is part of Soxargen Region. Saksarjan means South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Sarangani. The regional center is Coronadal City. From General Santos City, we take the bus to Maasim. This is a great place to go diving. I don't have a diving license, so I just did a discovery dive. I saw lots of beautiful sea creatures that I've never seen before. Hands down, it was one of the best things I've experienced. I went to Lemlunay Resort where you can dive at Tinoto Reef. If you're a beginner like me, you gotta practice in the pool first before going under the ocean. I have posted Lemlunay's Facebook page in the description below if you want to know more about diving here. Time to go back on land to eat! I had poki, which is raw tuna with vinegar and soy sauce, and tuna tail, which is fried and paxil because Jensan is known as the tuna capital of the Philippines. I also had steamed pompano. <laughs> Excuse me. Now that we're full, let's take the bus all the way to Lake Cebu in South Cotabato. Lake Cebu is known for another fish, tilapia. These nets are for breeding tilapia. That's the fisherman and his dog. Lake Cebu is also known as the home of dream weavers. Majority of the people living here are the Tiboli tribe and they are really good at weaving. The weavers told me that it takes them three to six months to finish one design. They use abaca to weave. They have to boil it with a plant for days to change the natural white abaca color to black and red. There are 32 steps to create Tinala. You can also learn how to weave from the Tiboli tribe. It'll take five years to master the art of weaving abaca. You can contact the School of Living Traditions if you want to learn. Let's go to the museum to learn more about the Tiboli tribe. This is their traditional clothes, but they don't wear them anymore. They really are just like you and me, but with a rich history and culture. This is the traditional Tiboli instrument called klintang. I was lucky to hear someone playing it live. Bravo! 
Bravo! This is a traditional Tiboli house, but in the olden times, the stilts were 8 to 10 feet tall. They needed space under their house to keep their animals. Near Lake Cebu, there are two more lakes. This is part of Lake Seleton. Plus seven waterfalls. But only two waterfalls are reachable through hiking because the path going to the other falls are now too dangerous because of a high possibility of landslide. Safety first! This is the first falls called Hikong Alu, which means passage falls. It stands 30 feet tall. This is the second falls called Hikong Biente which means immeasurable falls. It stands 75 feet tall. This is also the tallest falls among the seven. Mindanao is absolutely gorgeous with diverse people living and working together. Each tribe has their own culture, language, and point of view, but they also have similarities that allow them to coexist. Before we continue to the next region, let's see what you know. Which region is not part of Mindanao? Cagayan Valley, Caraga, or Soxargen? That's right, Cagayan Valley is not part of Mindanao. What does Soxargen mean? South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Jensen. Lake Cebu, Maasin, Jensen. South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Sarangani. That's right! It's South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, and Sarangani. Majority of people in Lake Cebu come from which tribe? Hiligaynon, Tiboli, or Muslim? That's right! Majority of people in Lake Cebu are from Tiboli tribe. Great job, boys and girls! Let's continue with our holiday! It's time to take a bus to Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. It consists of five provinces, Basilan, Lanao del Sur, Maguindanao, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. The regional center is Cotabato City. Lugar lang! This is the view from the bus. Let's stop over Datu Saudi Ampatuan in Maguindanao Province to see the Pink Mosque. It's called Masjidu de Mukong and is painted pink to symbolize peace and love. Isn't it just so pretty? Plus, it symbolizes something so beautiful that we should all follow. From here, we can take a van to Cotabato City. It is home to the largest mosque in the Philippines. It is called the Grand Mosque of Cotabato or Masjid al-Sultan al haji Hassan al-Balaqiyat. It is also the second largest mosque in Southeast Asia. This is the view going to the Grand Mosque. You can take a payong payong from the highway to the mosque. My payong payong driver told me that they take these plants from the water dry them, then use them to make their houses. It's supposed to keep the heat out even during noontime when the sun is at its hottest. Wow, these mosques are stunning! Muslim women wear a hijab like this, and some of them wear a niqab like this. It is part of their culture and religion. Cotabato is also filled with different tribes. 
There is so much allure in a city rich in culture and language. Let's go back chasing waterfalls. We are going to travel from Cotabato City to Alamada. Buses that go to Cagayan de Oro will pass by Alamada, so let's take that bus. From the Alamada Highway, we have to take a motorcycle called Habal Habal to get to the entrance. Then go down a lot of steps to get to Asik Asik Falls. Asik Asik means sprinkle in Hiligaynon. I had the best pastel at the entrance of this falls. Only for 10 pesos. It's time to move on to the next region, northern Mindanao. It consists of five provinces, Bukidnon, Kamigin, Lanao del Norte, Misamis Occidental, and Misamis Oriental. The regional center is Cagayan de Oro. We'll take the bus to Cagayan de Oro, but get off at Talakag Bukidnon Province. The road here is full of twists and turns and can be quite an adventure. The people on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The people on the bus go up and down, all through the town. There are also a lot of crops being planted along the road. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Talakag is home to the second tallest falls in the Philippines, with a total height of 870 feet. It's called Limon Sudan Falls in Iligan and Mindamura Falls in Bukidnon. The tallest falls, Aliwagwag Falls, is in Davao Oriental. It stands 1,120 feet tall. Limon Sudan Falls is actually part of three territories, Bukidnon, Lanao del Sur, and Iligan. But I've read that the easiest way to get there is from Bukidnon. Even from Bukidnon, it's still a challenge to get there. Get off at the Talaka bus stop, then take a Habal Habal to Limon Sudan. Then hike on a trail to get to the falls. You have to hire a hiking guide because it's not an easy hike, but it's definitely worth it. This is on top of the waterfalls, the river that leads to the falls. People can't cross the river because the current is too strong. Instead, they go behind the falls and cross to the other side, which is already part of Lanao del Sur. Oh hey, look! There's a rainbow! This is the view from the bottom of the falls. It's absolutely stunning. This is the view from the other side of the mountain, where you can see the whole waterfall. All that hiking gets my blood pumping for more adventures. Let's finally get to Cagayan de Oro, where we can go whitewater rafting. I booked with Cagay Whitewater Rafting 
to teach us how to go rafting safely. Before anything else, someone briefs us on what to do in different scenarios so we know how to handle emergencies. Falling off the raft is not a problem because our guide is professional and makes sure that everyone is safe. Trust the guide and have fun! From Cagayan de Oro, let's go to Iligan City, the city of majestic waterfalls. The famous Maria Cristina Falls is located in Iligan. It's 320 feet high and provides Mindanao with electricity. The local government has listed 24 waterfalls in Iligan, but we only have time for one more. Let's head to Tinago Falls. Tinago is a Filipino term meaning hidden. Before we go to the next region, let's see what you know. What do you call the wraparound that Muslim women wear? Hijab, Quran, or mosque? That's right! Muslim women wear hijab. What are the two regions we visited? Southern Mindanao and Northern Mindanao, Western Mindanao and Northern Mindanao, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao and Northern Mindanao. That's right! We visited BARMM and Northern Mindanao. True or false? Limon Sudan or Mindamura Falls is the tallest falls in the Philippines. That's right! The tallest falls in the Philippines is Aliwagwag Falls in Davao Oriental. Great job, boys and girls! Let's continue with our holiday. On to Zamboanga Peninsula. It consists of Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur, Zamboanga Sibugay, and Zamboanga City. The regional center is Pagadian City. We have to take a 12-hour bus ride from Iligan all the way to Zamboanga City. It is our gateway to Southeast Asia. People used to come to barter goods. That is why some products from Southeast Asia can only be bought in Canelar Barter Trade Center. Although, people have stopped trading and have started using cash. Zamboanga City is such a charming city with a lot of beautiful old buildings. It's where you can find the famous Vinta. The earliest known dwellers in Zamboanga were the Subanons and the Samas or Bajau. The Subanons were farmers and lived by the river. Suba means river. Meanwhile, the Bajaus were seafarers. Yup, seafarers like Moana. Nowadays, the Bajaos are known for their ability to swim for coins being thrown by tourists from arriving boats. Both Subanons and Bajaos speak different languages that are still being spoken until now. In the early 15th century, Muslim missionaries arrived and introduced religion and a new language. In 1585, the Spanish missionaries arrived and introduced Christianity and another new language, which has evolved into broken Spanish, commonly known as Chavacano. Between the first dwellers to the different religious missionaries, a variety of tribes have been formed. The Yakan tribe has a weaving center in Zamboanga City where you can see them manually weave clothes for different purposes. There are a lot of products on sale.
after all that shopping and sightseeing, let's hop on a boat to Grande Santa Cruz Island, commonly known as the Pink Beach, so we can relax and enjoy the sand and sea. The sand has a soft pink hue that can be clearly seen when the sun is shining bright. This is because of the crushed red corals known as organ pipe corals that blend well with the white sand. As I was planning this trip, my friend told me about the Yellow Boat Foundation. It started in Zamboanga, and they aim to help fishermen and students who need to cross the ocean to get to school. It was such a joy to see these boats on the island. They are being used for tourism, but I'm not sure if they are still being used for fishing or for the students. Before leaving Zamboanga, let's enjoy the wide range of cuisine from the different tribes and cultures in this city. Delicious! Now that we are well rested with a full stomach, it's time to get back on the road and continue our adventure. Let's get on the Dipolog bus. Lugar lang! I heard there is a beautiful falls along the way. We have to take a habal habal from the main road, then hike a little to get to the falls. This is the Merluket Falls. Let's go for a swim. Brrr, the water was nice and cool. Just what I needed after the hike. Now it's time to get back on the bus to the Pitan City, which is part of Zamboanga del Norte. From Dipolog, we can take another bus to the Pitan. This will be the last place we visit. Do you know who Jose Rizal is? That's right, he is the national hero of the Philippines. He was exiled in the Pitan city and lived here for four years. This is the site where Rizal landed. Unfortunately, the Rizal Park and Shrine is closed for renovation. We can walk around and see what the city has to offer. This is a theme park that children will surely enjoy. I love the ambience near the ocean. It's also lined with adorable restaurants and delicious food. This is St. James the Greater Parish, where Rizal used to hear Mass. This is the relief map of Mindanao made by Rizal. I love this city and I love Mindanao. I hope you enjoyed our trip as much as I did. Before we end our holiday, let's see what you know. Which tribes are the earliest known dwellers in Zamboanga? Subanons and Tauso, Chapacano and Bajau, or Subanons and Bajau? That's right, the Subanons and Bajaus are the earliest known dwellers in Zamboanga. Where was Jose Rizal exiled? Dipolog City, the Pitan City, or Zamboanga City? That's right! Jose Rizal was exiled in the Pitan City. How many regions are in Mindanao? Six regions, four regions, or five regions?
That's right, there are six regions in Mindanao, but we only went to four regions. Great job, boys and girls. You are super fantastic. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know in the comments below what else you would like to learn about the Philippines.